welcome everybody to the latest call. Um, there is a, a couple of things that I'd like to cover in the agenda today. Um, so the main discussion will be around um, uh, how we move forward with the activity list. Um, but I also wanted to give a quick update on some of the work that we've been doing at the ODI around uh, developer tools and, and documentation. Um, and uh, if we have time, then we can uh, raise any other issues that people want to uh, bring to the group. Um, I'm hoping to get uh, a few of you to contribute to the discussion as we go forward. There's a, I've had a few chats with people about the activity list over the last, uh, last couple of weeks. Um, so you won't just be hearing my voice uh, this time through. Uh, right, so I'm going to uh, share my screen. And, and hopefully you can see the slides. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so to kick things off, um, talk a little about the, the developer tools and documentation. So in our call uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Sally and I shared um, some of the thinking and, and uh, research we've been doing around how to best support uh, developers in beginning to use the data that has been published by um, a variety of organizations so far. Um, we feel that's quite important to uh, make sure that the ecosystem is um, in growing in the way that um, uh, it needs to, to start to drive uh, a nice feedback loop between users and publishers of data. Um, so what we've been doing at the ODI since then, um, we've been um, putting together a roadmap of um, content that we uh, want to publish, um, which I think will go into uh, the website. Um, that will include a range of different type of documentation, some tutorials, um, some general kind of background uh, information on how we're approaching building the, the technical ecosystem. Um, so I think once we've uh, firmed up what that looks like, we can share that uh, with the group um, so you can get a sense of, of exactly what we're going to be producing. Um, but just as a, a, a couple of updates on things we've been doing, um, one thing uh, that our uh, learning team has been working on is putting together uh, an interactive tutorial to help um, data publishers start to understand how to structure their data according to the, um, the data model that we've been recommending people use. Um, this is still a kind of in a kind of internal testing phase, so I'm just showing a screenshot for now. Um, but the way that this will work is there will be a, a series of um, uh, lessons that will take somebody through in a kind of interactive way of starting to express some data using our standard data model. So they'll actually get some uh, practical guidance on pulling together um, the data that they need to publish. Um, and it will kind of give them feedback on where they're making mistakes or, or whether um, where they're correctly following the, the standard model. So we think that will, um, will be um, a good starting point uh, for many developers, particularly those who are, you know, uh, don't have time to wade through uh, detailed specification and just want to quickly start to learn how to get the most from the standards we're creating. Um, the other thing that um, we've been working on and um, which we published uh, the first version of yesterday is our um, API dashboard. Um, so if you want to look at this now, it's at status.openactive.io. Uh, I'll do a, a quick uh, demo. Um, so uh, hopefully you can see this. Um, so what we wanted to do was to provide a bit more context around the list of uh, uh, data publishers that we have on the site at the moment. So which at the minute that just has uh, the names, logos and um, of the publishers with the links to the data set. Um, but in order to <clears throat> get a bit more uh, context, um, we wanted to surface some more of the metadata around the data sets and whether they are currently conforming to the various standards. So that um, if a developer just wants to get started with those that are conformant, they can quickly identify them. So the first release is quite, quite straightforward, um, but this is live now. So this will be automatically updated whenever any new um, data publishers come online. So right here, you can see immediately see which ones are 
conformant to this page and spec and the data model. Um, so you can quickly, uh, excuse me, kind of narrow down to those that are the conformant. Um, we're also surfacing um, where there are issues have been reported against the feed. So um, that's to help um, surface any known problems that the community have identified uh, and hopefully encourage uh, some of the publishers to start to um, close some of these down um, or address comments that, are, that um, developers have been uh, reporting. Um, so it's quite quite straightforward to begin with, but already provides a, a better overview of the current state of data publishing than we've had previously. Um, the next round of work on this will be to add some uh, summaries of each of the data set. Um, so you can get a sense of what's actually in the feed. Um, so we've been driving this based on some of the research that uh, Sally has been doing and the interviews with um, interviews with people she's been doing over the last few weeks. So what we've prioritized is we'll be adding um, for each of the data sets that follow the standards, um, summary of uh, what types of activities are present in the feed. So you can get a sense of whether a publisher is just focused on a small number of activities or has a, a whole variety of different uh, types of opportunity data. Uh, and then also geographic focus. So you'll be able to see which local authorities a publisher is providing data about. So again, if you're interested in just a specific region, it'll direct you to the data that's most useful to you, or if you're just looking for broad coverage about which feeds that you might want to focus on. So those will be the first two pieces of summary information, and then we'll expand that out based on feedback from the community. Um, it may be that we want to surface more information such as um, volume or frequency of change of some of the data, uh, to help people who are uh, building aggregators uh, or more information about some of the detail of the opportunities. So um, some of the suggestions that we've heard so far are things like whether there is a particular age range focus for some of these activities so that if a developer's uh, again interested in only certain types of opportunity data they can more easily find that those that could be most useful for their, um, their application development. So um, we'd love to get some feedback on this. Um, so I say it's at status.openactive.io. Um, it's all open source. So if you want to suggest um, improvements um, or contribute bug fixes, then we're happy to take them. Um, but, but as I say, we'll be doing some more work on this over the next few weeks and are hoping to have uh, an improved version deployed um, this side of Christmas that will have at least some of the um, summary information in there. Uh, so that's, that's the. Um, I was going to say, uh, I don't know, if, mainly because I'm Jamie's here. Uh, on that dashboard, it might be quite helpful to also show the available types of data. So, opportunity data, facilities data, um, yeah, et cetera, to see, to see that come out. I, you know, I know we don't have any yet, but uh, maybe there's something about that. So, it's clear. I think the, the, what the four types classes, courses, um, facility availability, and tickets. Um, something about that might be um, useful because particular data users are interested in facilities versus um, and then potentially also um, something about whether they're bookable when we get to that point might be useful. It's just two things. Yeah, sure. I think as we add, um, uh, so once we've made some more progress on booking, then I would expect to update this to include, you know, whether those uh, providers are including support for that in their feeds. But yeah, so um, uh, I'll when I circulate the slides after the call, I'll put a link into the GitHub project. So if anyone wants to submit feature suggestions, then, then they can do that. Just to um, jump in quickly, sorry yeah. Lee. Uh, just wanted to say as well that we have actually, um, you might notice that some of these look very uh, sort of stark developer -y, developer -y, if that's even a word, um, but sort of bare bones at the moment. Um, we have started a, an, another activity in a different stream to update the Open Active website and to think about um, how that actually sits with all the tools that we're creating as well. So um, the idea is that we will basically be um, considering the branding that should be applied in different ways and hopefully to create some patterns as well um, that can potentially be applied when we are creating these more standalone pieces. So don't be alarmed if things suddenly start looking a little bit different across the board. Um, and if you want to provide feedback in terms of the interface, you're very welcome to, but also asterisk that they might change as well. 
Cool. Thank you. Um, has anyone got any other uh, comments or questions about that? No. Okay. Right. Then I'm going to move on to the um, activity list discussion. Uh, I'm just going to share my slides again. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of things I wanted to try and cover off today. So briefly kind of recap where we are with the list uh, and then have a discussion about um, how we can move forward. Um, I, I think a couple of weeks ago, I briefly um, suggested that we might want to um, hold a face-to-face -face workshop uh, to try and push forward on uh, some of these issues in, in a way that's, that's, that will be easier to do than just doing it on a webinar like this. Um, so I'd like to kind of uh, discuss what that, an outline for that workshop might look like. Um, so just to kind of recap current status, so the work that we did um, earlier this year is we developed a set of um, draft editorial guidelines that was uh, intending to help us scope um, the requirements around the activity list and um, some of the high level um, I guess rules or governance around what goes into it. So um, to help us make decisions about the scope and content of the list. Um, those, that, those were circulated and I had feedback from, from a number of you on those. Um, we've published a very early draft of the activity list. Um, that was based on um, some work uh, that a number of you were involved with to help combine the Sport England, Sport Suite and exercise movement and dance lists. Um, as a, we use those as a starting point because they were already um, well developed and have been shared under an open license so that we, had, um, we could create something open by drawing on them. Um, the result of that is we've ended up with a uh, an activity list which is uh, quite broad and shallow. It's got um, 153 top level terms in it um, and then below that there's 400 additional terms. Um, some of the discussion that we've had and uh, some of the feedback we've had is I think different opinions about how um, how structured the list should be. So um, you know, whether it would be useful to have a, a more nested, deeper nested structure or whether we should be trying to have something that is relatively um, small and uh, more flat. Um, so there's uh, 22 comments on the, the spreadsheet at the moment. Um, just uh, mostly, I think, minor amends to wording, synonyms, etc. One area that we haven't really addressed yet is uh, what we're calling collections. So where we might want to group together activities in, uh, in other ways. So, you know, to identify um, which sports are recognized by Sport England or which are um, winter sports or Olympic sports, etc. cetera. Um, we've been using a Google spreadsheet to collate that, the initial data, which um, was good enough to do the the combination of those first three lists, but is not really suitable for the kind of work that we need to do ongoing. It is not really a lot, it's not a great environment for doing this kind of collaborative editing and restructuring um, of uh, what is quite a, quite a large data set. So that's where we're at and we need to uh, come up with a, a more detailed plan for how to move forward so we can publish uh, a more complete list for the community. Um, so that's the kind of some of the discussion that I wanted to, to have. Um, I've spoken to a few of you who, who offered to kind of put some of your perspective on um, what, what we should be doing and where the list would be useful to you. Uh, so I'm going to um, uh, call out a few of you now to maybe uh, chip in with a bit of, um, bit of input. Um, so, so Nikki, are you able to um, give us a bit of um, your experience on developing these kind of shared code lists and thesaurus from your work that you've done in, in Porism? Um, yes, absolutely fine. Um, for those of you who don't know what Porism do, we've worked for probably getting on for 15 years now, basically with the LGA, the Local Government Association, on 
developing applications, but also a suite of controlled lists or um, taxonomies that local government use to basically to identify and be able to report in a common way on their what they do so the services that a local authority provide how they provide them who might use them all those sort of things um, and we've probably got up to about 20 taxonomies or controlled lists now in the model most of which map to each other um, with us what we call the service list or the local government service list sitting at the center of it so that that is literally a list of everything that a local authority of any type within the UK and indeed you know we've worked with some European countries as well would provide and that's been around and is a sort of fairly mature list now I think there's something like 1700 terms in it and it's it's been around for 12 years um, and it it's pretty much in sort of maintenance mode now um, it links through to something that we call powers and duties so legislation that drives what a local authority can do and we do an annual review of changes in legislation to identify changes there would be in the service list so it it's pretty much a sort of mature stable list now but it probably took us I don't know somewhere in the region of seven or eight years to get to that point um, but where we really started was a requirement for local authorities to report to central government on on the services they provided and basically identifying there was no common ground for doing that in that you know some authorities would consider they provided 20 services and others would consider they provided 2,000 services and it just depended how granular at what level of granularity you were looking at it so we basically got together a working group to pull together lists from a sample of local authorities who'd taken it pretty seriously to start with and were sort of of different types and um, to pull together a sort of draft list with a working group um, and we probably spent getting on for a year doing that um, and the service list is a relatively easy one in, the, in that it's just a flat list this is a service kind of thing um, and we had a sort of three monthly review of that and we basically just used at the time just sort of excel spreadsheets posted on for and discussion forums to to consult and talk about that i mean it was before the days of google spreadsheets and that so we didn't even have any way of easily sharing spreadsheets or sharing the information but but that's how we did it and basically we at Porism did the work and put the, the drafts of the, the spreadsheets and, and drafts of the taxonomies together. But the working group who were all pretty much all local authority representatives were the ones that had the sort of final say on what went in and what didn't go in. Over time, that list kind of grew and there were other reasons that people people sort of wanted to say, OK, well, I work in social care, so I want to see my bit of the list. So we built a functions list that sits on top of the service list and breaks it down so that people can look at it in small chunks. It kind of cross references it. And we do that. We've done that with lots of different lists, sort of what channels are the services did, delivered through, all sorts of things like that. And as I say, it links through to the powers and duties. It links through to what records you keep about a service. Um, and how long you need to keep them so people can download all those and use them. Um, and basically, historically, as I say, the, the local authority community took responsibility for agreeing the content of all the, all the lists. Um, over time, that's gradually died to a great extent. The working group as such doesn't exist any longer albeit for a project we're currently working on we're looking at trying to reinstate it but um, so all the lists or everything's pretty much in maintenance mode um, and the key things really that we kind of had to establish up front were the rules about the taxonomy so you know 
what, what, what capitalization did you use? What special characters did you allow? All those sort of things. Um, and trying to achieve some sort of consistency in levels of granularity and detail. Um, and those are all pretty well established now. So we, everything is to a great extent in maintenance mode. And um, subsequently, we developed some tools in house that sit as sort of part of the LG Inform and LG Inform Plus tools that the local government association run to publish the vocabularies and the mappings between them so that people, they're basically available to anyone to download and take offline to use in any way that they want. And they're also published through the API that is available to. Um, subscribers to some LG Inform Plus through the LGA so that basically we're encouraging everybody who's dealing with local government to use those same taxonomies to cross-reference everything to kind of so that we've got a common ground for reporting. So I guess that's kind of where we are and what we're doing um, unless there was anything else you wanted me to cover Lee. No, that, 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 that's uh, quite helpful. Um, so, so you started from started from spreadsheets, but you're using more online tooling now. Did, did you uh, have to? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on. Um, I'm just wondering about how you kind of uh, were you able to get to a reasonable um, structure for the list just by doing it online, or did you get to get the working group together? In a no, room? we we did actually. We did a lot of it online and, and at that point in time, or certainly when we started, we had a, a sort of discussion forum that, that we used to use and, and it was quite well used. But we also had, I think it was three to four meetings a year where you actually got the, the whole working group together and kind of covered to cover all sorts of issues about, you know, where we were, what other uses there might be for these things and whatever but we did find that it actually helped to kind of get people in a room and come and tell you how they were using it and what issues they had um rather than just get, letting them you know stick it on a forum and it, that seemed to work quite well in the early days um i think you know what the situation would be be now i don't know we might be about to find out if we're trying to resurrect our working group um, but obviously, you know, online meetings and that are, are an option now, which probably weren't so easily an option back then. So, you know, we might have gone down that route if, if we were starting now kind of thing. OK. OK, that, that's useful. Thank you. Um, is the so you mentioned just uh, some stuff around, um, you know, uh, rules around capitalization and things. Were there other types of kind of uh, governance and decision making support that you put in place you know I'm thinking about because what some of the things that we've been struggling with is the kind of scope of the activity list about how much we put in there um, have you got any suggestions there um I think perhaps ours was more clearly defined than yours in that you know we we started off with what what services does a, does a local council have to deliver so you know that's a pretty fine item fit list it's it's um probably less flexible than and you know less people involved than than in your your vocabulary or your taxonomy um so i think that one was fairly straightforward some of the others like we've got a subjects list which um was put together and that's a bit broader and coming up with rules was really was really quite difficult for that but again we tried to to almost think of it from the opposite end and consider if someone was coming to use this list would they look for this term in it or not um and you know again it that was a that was a list of of subjects that someone might be coming to government for not just local government but government as a whole and rather than as we as with the service list we started from this is what local government think they provide with the subjects list we we looked at it from the other point of view point of view and said if i was someone coming to the subject list 
coming looking for something from government would i expect this term to be in the list would i expect to find this here so that might be an approach that works better from your point of view because because that's the way you're kind of looking at things at providing something for the pub public to use to find things rather than telling someone what you're doing kind of thing so so that opposite approach probably works better for for that one yeah okay that's useful thanks uh, and i think the the other the other issue that you highlighted there is this the need for ongoing maintenance and support around yeah um these these things as data sets um, yeah and in the early days that's quite there's, there's quite a lot of work involved in that um when we started off with the service list we had quarterly updates to it and we pretty much did that with with all the the bigger bigger ones of, of the lists um they've now as i say pretty much gone into annual update mode having got them fairly stable but certainly early on you know you'd find barely a sort of one or two days went by without somebody saying well i think this should be in there or that so we had to try, kind of have a cutoff point at which we said okay we're going to look at everything everyone's raised at this point and it was as i say i think it was it, it probably started off as almost monthly for the first six months but after that went into quarterly mode so that um we, we got regular updates because what we did find was that it you know people who were trying to use it if they found that there was too much missing from it or it didn't work for them we were trying to encourage all the local authorities to use them so we had to kind of put a fair amount of effort into keeping it up to date and making it how they wanted to use it otherwise it was probably going to die anyway yeah okay was it a centralized group that um kept that that maintained and managed that list in the early days to keep it moving it was no it wasn't it wasn't well the group basically i and some of my colleagues would put together the uh, the proposed changes and then we circulated it to the working group so offline not they didn't actually have to do any work other than read the changes that we'd suggested and agree them or or question them kind of thing so that and we then publish take their feedback into account and publish another draft of the list and you know for for the first six months it was always a draft one draft two and whatever and you know didn't go into a full live version for at least six months after we started but uh, and, and did everyone need to agree to all of the changes or was it just a kind of voting everyone didn't have to agree it was it was on a you know majority basis but in practice we didn't generally find that once things went out to the working group it was pretty much unanimous either you know yes this is this is okay or no we don't think it is and this is why not and and we didn't often find there were situations where people would actually disagree about it so we had to had to make decisions based on sort of majorities. It was really a kind of either it's right or it's not situation. Okay, okay, uh, that that's really useful input. Thank you. I mean, this, this is clearly something that you've you spent a lot of time working on already. So um, useful yeah. to kind of base our expectations on what we need to do next. Um, uh, Becky. Uh, are you able to um, give a bit of an update on um how you've been developing using your activity list we chatted a little bit about the kind of effort that you put into kind of ongoing maintenance which might be useful for the group to hear as well yeah yeah sure so um sports i guess is actually probably predominantly powered by the XNC list in that it appears although we've got um 10 different modules the activity list is within all of those um, so whether somebody is promoting an event, um, an activity, um, they're promoting their club, whatever it is, at some point there will be a question around what sport or physical activity does this does this relate to. Um, so for us, the actual sports list is, is really important and really key. Um, and not only for the promotion side of it, but then for the user searching, they can then search from any of the activities that the user can so it, it's kind of it works in both ways um, and then for our uh, kind of our internal staff and our client staff um, the end the public end user can then also 
say what sports and physical activities they're interested in. Um, so then people can get a gauge of, well, they might not necessarily be taking part, but actually they want to know some information about it. Um, so they can kind of gauge interest um, from, from those end users. Um, but one of the modules that we do have, which is where it's most important, is our A to Z sport and physical activity. Um, and this is kind of, it's where it's all powered um, and it's a one-stop shop in that anything that is then tabbed with that specific sport. So say we've got an A to Z page on cycling, any events that are tagged with cycling, any activities that are tagged with cycling, any jobs that are tagged with cycling and are all then pulled onto that one page based on, based on that sport physical activity. Um, but on that page, you'll also have other things that we add, which is, so that it's not just a blank page that just says cycling, it just has an image on it. Um, we make sure that we provide the description, um, benefits of taking part, how they get involved, equipment, involved, equipment that might be involved with that activity, and then brief facts about it so that it really does become a one-stop shop for that person, so that if they want to find out about it, um, any information they want is all there for them. So then maintenance for us becomes um, quite difficult, particularly with um, the new list, if it keeps growing um, and growing and things are added on a kind of quarterly basis or however quickly it is, for us, I then personally have to go and make sure that we're providing all of that information um, because as soon as it appears on our activity list, it's on our A to Z and it's published for the public. Um, so maintenance for us is is quite a, a long and arduous job. Um, yeah. Is there anything else uh, you wanted me to cover? Um. I, th I think we there was you gave me some um, you mentioned about how you know how things have get onto the list and but uh, some of the how you make your decisions there so you mentioned that you've got to put it in all of this extra content but you were saying that for example just because something on on Wikipedia didn't mean that it would necessarily go into the list yeah so because of the amount of information that we want to make sure that we provide. Um, for the end user and obviously we want to make sure it's it's all correct um, we won't just add anything onto the list it you know I have to be able to find the sufficient information from a reliable source um, just because it's I guess on a couple of web links or there's, there's one or one or two clubs maybe out there but if they're not providing any information on what that sport is then I can't add it to our list because it's not yeah we need to make sure that what we're publishing is correct um, so yeah we, we kind of go through every, everything that comes in and if i can find enough trustworthy information then then it's it can go on yes okay that's interesting thank you i think um oh, the reason why i think that's interesting is because it, it helps uh surface um you know where we might how we might make decisions about the scope of the list um you know at what point does something become significant enough that it should go into the list and then be shared with the rest of the community and uh, when is something just you know a very small scale activity that might only be in one you know one or two locations that isn't significant yet significant in order to um, be kind of standardized and have some of this extra um, extra information around it um, and I think that connects to some of some things that um, Ben some ideas that Ben has been exploring um, with the work he's been doing with Get Active um, and kind of tooling and uh, how to surface more of that kind of use of the activities. Are you able to cover that a bit now, Ben? Yeah, sure. So, um, similarly on Get Active, um, the categorization of activities to sessions is really important because search actually uses that um, directly. So if a user searches for um, an activity and it's not spelt the same way or it's um, basically they're not going to find anything or also they might be presented with um, two or three different um, namings of an activity so it is problematic um, to not have a, an activity list which is um, kind of neat and tidy it's also very important in discovery. So even if we had um, search, um, which had text, uh, which um, was a bit more flexible, it would still really impact discovery and um, 
the, the sports directory, which is also an A to Z that we haven't got to. Um, so yeah, although um, it's not blocking publishing of data, of open data, it's harming usability of that data um, a fair bit. So that's the, that's the kind of context. Um, so what we need to see is um, what we need, what Get Active needs the ability to do is to quite quickly um, sort out some of the more obvious problems with the list. And um, to go about doing that, I've been doing some concept development around a tool that would um, essentially um, map bad activity names to good activity names and allow us to iterate um, a list and treat it as more of an evolving thing rather than trying to kind of reach this um, kind of definitive list um, to kind of treat it more of, uh, as an evolving, um, ever-changing thing. Um, because, oh yeah, and the other key thing is that um, in this con in this tool that we've de been developing is that it's it's based entirely on what's already being used. Um, there's a, a slight problem with um, having a theoretical model um, of a good list. There's a couple of problems. One is is that um, it doesn't take into account what people are actually searching for or what people are actually categorizing their, their activities as. Um, so we, we might have, um, I mean, just a good uh, analogy is, is that tomatoes are with the vegetables in the supermarket because people aren't looking at it. People aren't looking for tomatoes in the fruit section. Um, so we need a way of, of um, matching it to what's actually out there. Um, so I, and unfortunately I'm not able to, sh I've, I was hoping to show um, the tool for, for using, um, f for working with the list. Unfortunately I haven't um, been having a few problems with my Mac and, and can't show you that today, but hopefully I'll be able to um, share that with you all soon. Um, it's a way of quite frictionlessly working with the list and um, assigning hierarchies and um, removing categories which don't make a lot of sense um, and changing um, synonyms. It's, we basically had a, a really good look at the list that's out there now that's available as open data. Um, identified the key problems and um, done feature development around solving that. Um, and, and so with, for instance, what, one thing you might be able to see within this tool is that um, box fit spelt with one word has a hundred sessions next to it. And then box fit with two different words has um, far fewer sessions um, so that can help with making decisions around um, what the more popular forms of categorization are um, and we can match that with what people are searching for to arrive at um, decisions um, that aren't just theoretical so is that making sense so far Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think, I think what's, sorry, carry on. I was just going to say, so it was originally envisaged as a get active, um, way of mapping, um, sort of bad activity names to good ones so that we fix, um, our search and get active, but then, um, we've kind of, um, been looking at it more from um, well if everyone has a similar problem then why can't this be done in an aggregator level or maybe even an open active level um, 
as a way of collaboratively um, evolving a list. So that it's not just based on theory and it's not just based on um, the expertise which is in this group, um, that it's mapped to um, the live available open data that's out there. Um, just one thing, so uh, having so, um, Ben demoed the tool that unfortunately you and I able to show today to Lee and I previously, um, and I guess one thing that struck me from looking at that um, was the ease in which you can collaborate on the list with the knowledge of which, what data is available. So, you know, there are 300 sessions of this thing, is it the same as that thing? Um, but doing it in a kind of, um, the ease in which you can navigate a hierarchy, categorize things in a hierarchy, uh, almost like we were trying to do in the spreadsheet, but with real data attached to it and in a way that people can actually, like if Becky's doing stuff um, to, to literally go, yeah, okay, that is what that is and, and I'll drag it over here and, um, and, and some kind of process around it, I guess was the discussion that, that was the interesting thing, at least for, for me in listening to that uh, um, before. Um, and, and so, uh, and how, how can we as a community collaborate better around the, the yeah, yeah so I think um, try to kind of summarize some of that, that discussion I think we've got some slightly different uh, requirements um, and that's um, uh, in that there's there's a need from some people to have a fairly uh, stable well structured list that's got kind of well defined content in it so that it can drive um, these kind of A to Z lists and also I think support some level of data integration. But then there's also a need to be able to uh, more quickly and more rapidly um, do mappings between activity names in order to improve discovery in services like Get Active. And that might need to be done, you know, on a um, very quick turnaround, you know, that you might be want to make changes almost daily to kind of deal with um, quality issues that are coming up in the published data. And it feels like there's a, that's a different kind of rate of change than if we wanted to publish a more kind of stable reviewed uh, list. And there's, there's kind of lots of, um, lots of uh, scope to kind of do things in between those two extremes. Um, I think we definitely need better tooling than, than we have at the moment, which is just a spreadsheet. Um, so we, we should, I think we should be exploring that. Um, but then, yeah, around that is kind of how, what approach are we taking? Is this just going to be something that um, will be open for anyone to kind of contribute to, or do we want a slightly more stronger governance around it? Um, it feels like <clears throat> adding kind of mappings and uh, synonyms is something that could easily be kind of effectively crowdsourced. But if we wanted to have a uh, more, you might need a more rigorous approach to some of the kind of hierarchy and structure of the list, uh, particularly as people are starting to base websites around it because, um, you know, somebody making an arbitrary change to that list could end up having impacts on uh, quite a few different applications. So having some review around that, I think, would be useful. Um, so these are some of the issues that I think we need to be um, kind of digging into in a bit, in a bit more detail. Um, uh, and, and also around, coming back to kind of Nikki's point around kind of ongoing maintenance to make sure that the list is sustainable. Um, tooling can help with that sustainability, but if we are uh, going to put some governance around it, then we need people in the community who are happy to take on uh, roles there to help with that management. Um, because really you need content experts and people who are close to this on a daily basis in order to be making those decisions. Um, yeah, so Lee, just to just to add to that, I mean, um, <clears throat> as we've as we've seen already, the actual structure of the list and the format that the list takes uh, is is uh, will vary based on the use case. I mean, um, a member of the public who has no knowledge at all uh, of the hierarchies that you've got um, and you have used for you to you know, for you to classify activities, they don't really care about how it's classified, they will want to search on a very, very broad, flat list, uh, probably with a lot of 
uh, functionality in there for it to auto fill text boxes and all sorts of stuff like that based on, on the physical data set underneath the scenes. Um, that's where you're also going to bump into a fair number of misspellings uh, and spaces and hyphenation problems and things like that. Uh, whereas a back office user who is trying to do reporting to a higher power um, is going to have a, a structure probably almost imposed on them as to uh, we need you to report on your usage statistics or you know whatever the case is as per this this list that has been defined elsewhere um, <clears throat> on that side of things I know for a fact that for global uh, who are a part of of you know of the group the open active group have spent a lot of time on tooling uh, that they use uh, for them to take usage uh, data and based on the name uh, and and all sorts of other data they already map it through to a standard list um, I think we did get that list sent through when we were working on this previously uh, but I don't know if it was incorporated into the draft at that stage um, but what I would definitely say is uh, we need to be a bit wary that we don't try and create a one uh, size fits all solution. Um, I do. I I do absolutely get Ben's point that um, a general search mechanism that websites could employ as as part of the data user side of things is is going to be invaluable. Um, but I also think that we sh that we should take the opportunity to be a bit stricter on the, on on the physical publishers. And say that um, that they should do a better job classifying all of the data that they're publishing, uh, because whenever it gets down to you trying to determine a a type of activity by the product name, in effect, you are never going to win. Um, the classic example I can come up with is hot dogging. I, I you know, and I would I would challenge everyone here to try and and actually classify hot dogging as to what what type of uh, you know activity you think hot dogging is I, I don't know i'd guess it's something that was on masterchef rather than any other. <laughs> so um hot dogging just so you know is a social form of kayaking i thought it might be to do with banana boats but <laughs> so um, it, you know um I think I think if we try to do something based around the product name, uh, we are definitely going to be straying into a high maintenance environment because people are always going to be coming up with new product names, new brand names, and um, they'll always be trying to reinvent things to try and get a better marketing spin on something. Uh, so I, I would tend to say that it that we would be better served by trying to get all of the publishers to tag all of their data with a stricter hierarchy and then having the front end user searching uh, using tags and 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 all sorts of synonyms and rich text and things like that on those hierarchies to then try and narrow it down to did you mean xyz so that hot dogging for example could be a synonym for kayaking so if you went onto the search engine as a member of the public and searched for kayaking hot dogging would then appear and also vice versa but i don't think that we should allow a publisher to be able to put forward something like hot dogging as a valid term you know on the list um just as an alternative view because the jade isn't here um i, I totally understand that that really um I, I, yeah i see that that Absolutely. Um, Jade's um, been doing, she's actually in the Data Hub, she's sent her apologies, she's in the Data Hub steering group right now, so that's a bit ironic. Um, so she's, uh, she's representing Open Active there and trying to make sure that things connect and, and, and just referencing the, the, the Data Hub's list that they did send us in the um, W3C group uh, last, a few months ago, um, whenever it was. Um, it is quite focused on uh, the not the, the the user of that list is not the consumer it's actually the um person who's looking at statistics about leisure centers and so you have like a big focus of they've split out um classic things like um get back get back to netball or whatever it's called what's it called back back to netball, back to netball. so back to netball is actually on there as an, a specific activity at that level 
I was obviously in the context we're talking about here, we want just netball. We don't want back to netball as the program to be featured. Um, and that's the kind of the breakdown is really focused by the, the leisure operator needs to provide certain feedback for certain funding. Then there's a lot of detail. And when they don't, it's kind of much, much more high level. And that was kind of one of the issues that we saw with our list, I guess, came around when the process was, was going on in terms of incorporating that. Um, but, but one of the things that um, we've struggled with with EMD and the, this, the stuff that, that Jade's representing, um, but also uh, in terms of the data that they have, is that there's a lot of activities in, in Exercise Move Dance, which are a bit weird and niche and are hard to categorize. Club size, for example, you know, night, nightclub exercise um, is, is a thing. It's, it's, if you want to do club size, you want to do club size. You don't want to do uh, aerobics because it's quite a different experience. And because, because in, in EMD, the, the name of the game isn't just let's call this exact same activity something fun to sell it, uh, which does happen in other areas, um, like back to netball, why don't we call it netball? Um, it, the name of the game is let's make the activity itself as fun and interesting and accessible as possible and distinguish it from other activities. And so you end up with some like Zumba rising to the top because they become really popular and others that are kind of not so well known um, still being unique. And, and, you know, if someone wants to go and do Bikram yoga, they want to do Bikram yoga because it's the same moves in order as you do every week in every center, a bit like, a, um, you know, similar things that where it's, it's always the same. Um, and, and if you want to do hot yoga, it's different every time. And so if you want to do, go, go and do Bikram, you can do it with your eyes closed at 8.30 in the morning as part of your morning routine or whatever, because you know it so well. You want to go and do Bikram yoga. It might be that hot yoga is available, but I guess the consumer expectation would be to distinguish those things um, because they are packaged differently, because they are different. And so from the EMD perspective, um, like there's a granularity problem because we almost want to say club size Bikram yoga so people can find those things but I totally understand the point of, well, but then how do we keep this up to date? Because if someone could just put hot logging and cover size and whatever I've just come up with in the, in the list, then at what point do we link that back to the, the high level stuff? And where do we draw the line between Zumba is obviously its own category now and something, and cover size probably is also its own category with 20,000 instructors, whatever it has now, um, but something much more, um, uh, much less well known may not qualify for that. I don't, I don't know whether. Uh, that. that would be, I imagine, what Jade might have said. Apologies when you're watching this, Jade, if I haven't rendered your view uh, appropriately. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, I think that's really interesting kind of context there around the, you know, different, different criteria that might apply to something being kind of significant enough to be in the list. Um, and I think there's, there's a, a lot of this that we need to kind of, um, Pick over in a bit more detail, which is why I was proposing a, a workshop. Um, I, uh, which I'm still still keen to do. Um, I, how, how many of you here would be interested in attending that? Assuming we can get a suitable date for people, just put your hands up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, in terms of we have a vote in there of, of remote versus. Um, does it have to be in real life, or we have to do it remote, or do you want to? Um... <laughs> I was hoping to at least get a group together in a room. Uh, I'm kind of mindful. I don't want to kind of exclude anyone. Um, so it may be that we maybe should be looking at doing it in a couple of locations or uh, doing a face-to-face -face one and then an online one as well. Um, but I just think we can have a higher bandwidth conversation and do some kind of post-it work and stuff to kind of uh, get some decisions uh, quicker. Um, in terms of what, uh, let's see if I can share my screen here. Um, the kind of things that I was thought we could kind of dig into is um, some of this discussion around um, governance and um, maintenance of the list. So how do we make sure that um, what we're building is sustainable? Um, you know, even if we're just building tooling rather than a data set, there's there's still some sustainability issues to consider. Um, I think. We're in agreement that we need better tooling um, to support some collaboration. Um, so this might be an opportunity for, for Ben to share what he's been working on. There are also some existing um, open source tools to support uh, creation of these kinds of um, uh, taxonomies. Um, I've got a short list that uh, I need to review uh, to see whether they might be suitable for our needs. Um, but they all have some element of managing hierarchy, uh, new terms, 
adding uh, kind of documentation to terms, etc. So the kind of core things are there, um, but we might need to either customize them or think about adding in additional reporting. So uh, connecting the activity list to the opportunity data to see how many, you know, how many are actually being used in practice. Um, in, workshop would be a good idea to kind of go through some of the structure in a bit more detail because um, we know there are I think there's some structural problems with with the list um, things aren't quite in the right, right kind of categories uh, and then make sure that we've got a clear set of tasks to to, uh, to take us forward to get to a, a 1.0 list um, there's quite a lot of ground to cover and maybe that we, we can't do all of it in one workshop um, uh, but I just want to see if everyone had feedback on that in terms of kind of scope. Um, if there's enough interest, in, which seems to be, then I'll um, I'll share around a doodle poll to try and get something in um, in the new year. Any comments? Does it seem okay? Yeah. Okay, so thumbs up from a number of people. Okay, uh, this, is, this is it. This is what I need to do from now on. It's kind of waves and thumbs up is clearly how I uh, do ad hoc polls. Okay, um, we're kind of almost out of time. So I um, uh, will probably wrap things up unless anyone has anything else to, to add. Our, um, our next call is on the 13th of December. Um, uh, which we're going to be focusing on booking. Uh, so uh, Sally has been doing some research around booking in the sector. Uh, so we want to share kind of our findings uh, and have a discussion about how we move that uh, strand forward as well. Um, we're also, uh, I think, planning to have a workshop around booking as well in the new year um, and get together some people who are both publishing and using data to um, uh, you know, again, to, ha to have a kind of more detailed discussion around that and share some requirements. Um, again, um, that won't be to it, won't be excluding anyone, it'll be an open invite and we'll be reporting outputs of that back to the group and uh, continuing discussion in this, in this forum. Um, so uh, I think I will probably wrap up there unless anyone has any, any final comments. Um, shake your heads if that's, uh, if, that, if there's nothing. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming that's a no. All right, uh, in that case, uh, thank you all for uh, joining and providing some uh, input. It's been really useful. Um, and I'll speak to you all on the 13th. Great. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> right. Bye. Bye.